Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Ryosuke Tominaga. Uh, thank you for having me here today, and I'm glad. I'm really glad to have this opportunity to, for sharing my uh, recent work. So uh, I have I have been working on hydrodynamic instabilities in protoplanetary disks, and dust evolution uh, through coagulation, collisional growth, and and uh, what I'm going to introduce today is dust coagulation driven by hydrodynamic instabilities and its key role in planetesimal formation. So uh, here is the outline of this talk and let me begin with uh, very basic topics about uh, planet formation, planetesimal formation and especially I'm going to focus on known obstacles against dust growth, obstacles that prevents dust growth towards planetesimals. So uh, an ultimate goal is of my research to understand how planets form. Here, what I'm showing, what I'm showing here is the uh, exoplanet population as a as a function of planet mass and the same major axis. And I'm also showing the solar system planets here. And as we can see from this figure, there are various types of planets, and there some some types of planets also uh, don't exist in the solar system. And to understand their origin and origin of their variety, we have to understand dust evolution in protoplanetary disk. And the evolu evolution of dust grains to planets is a long way in terms of their sizes. And this is the size ladder from grains to gas giants. And uh, the evolution starts from collisional growth of micron sized grains. Their collision growth produce aggregates or pebbles whose sizes are millimeter or centimeter in radius. And in this talk, we call three of them uh, dust for simplicity, just for simplicity. And for planetesimals or larger object, the gravity, mutual gravity becomes more important to bind material, material including gas. So uh, if we divide this evolutionary process into two steps, the very first step is planetesimal formation. And where and when planetesimals form is important to understand the resulting architectures of uh, planetary systems. And also we have to understand how they form in the first place, which is the main topic of this talk. So uh, in the classical theory, there are some obstacles that prevent dust coagulation towards planetesimal sizes. And I'm going to briefly review two, of, two main obstacles, which are radial drift and collisional fragmentation. And one of the major obstacles is the radial drift. This is caused by the different orbital motion of dust and gas. The left figure shows the radial force balance for dust and gas. And for dust grains, the stellar gravity is balanced with the centrifugal force. So uh, they are trying to move at Keplerian speed. But as for gas, there is a pressure gradient force, in which is usually outward because inner gas is usually hotter and denser. So uh, it slows down a little bit uh, gas motion, azimuthal gas motion. So gas velocity is sub-Keplerian. As a result, dust grains feel headwind in the opposite direction of the, uh, their motion, their orbital motion and they lose angular momentum and moving inward. This is what we call the radial drift of dust grains. And this velocity is quite, quite large, quite, fa quite fast. And the terminal velocity is written like this. And this depends on the dimensionless stopping time. Uh, this is a measure, kind of a measure of dust sizes. For example, one centimeter of dust grains of one centimeter have a 0.1 Stokes number. And then the, this speed is maximized at the Stokes number of unity, and it can be 0 0.01 AU per year. It means that it takes only 10,000 year, 10,000 year for dust grains to move across a disk. For example, from disk edge of 100 AU to the center, the, to the star. So, uh, and this is even shorter than the disk ages, age of the observed disks. And theoretical models of dust coagulation and their motion show that large dust grains with a Stokes number of 0.1 cannot grow larger before they reach the center star. So uh, this radial drift motion limits the dust growth at these sizes, Stokes number of 0.1. And 
yeah, this is the so-called radio drift barrier. And another problem is collisional fermentation. There is a critical velocity determined by uh, material properties of dust grains, for example, uh, chemical compositions or internal structure of dust aggregates or pebbles. And if the uh, collision speed exceeds this critical value, then dust grains cannot stick together and they will be disrupted as a result of collisions. And it's still under, under debate how large this critical velocity is for each material. But uh, here I'm showing uh, typical values, uh, examples of the critical velocities referred in the literature for uh, these uh, species. And yeah, and uh, it's too ice was has been uh, thought to be sticky and its critical velocity is about 15 meters per second. But uh, CO2 ice is less sticky. The critical velocity is 10 times less than uh, the one of the water ice. So, and uh, also as for uh, rocky dust grains, uh, it depends, the critical velocity of silicate significantly depends on their surface state. If their surface is dry, then the critical velocity is as, uh, uh, as large as the one of the water uh, ice, H2O ice. So it can be a 15 meter per second, but it's still under debate. So uh, yeah, as I said, it's still under debate. Uh, let's see how large the actual collision velocity is and com let's compare them with this uh, critical velocity. So uh, maximum drift speed is about 1% of sound speed. It's about, uh, typically it's about uh, 10 tenths meter per second. So in that case, in that case, water ice can be, uh, can be growing through collisions at this speed. But uh, CO2 ice will be uh, disrupted as a result of collision induced by drift motion. And in, in, the, in protoplanetary disk, we should also take into account the turbulent motion. And turbulent motion, it reduces uh, the dust, grain co dust collisions. And so in that case, uh, collision speed will be higher than this. So our uh, fermentation will be more a uh, serious problem for especially for CO2 ice or uh, SiO2. So uh, the message here is that even in a cold region, in outer region of the disk, fermentation may limit the dust growth. And it can be lower than uh, the limited value of Stokes number uh, by uh, the radio drift. So uh, yeah, I, I, as, as we saw, dust coagulation will stop at some sizes, for example, uh, one millimeter or one centimeter or one meter due to those uh, barriers. So uh, previous studies have shown that coagulation may not produce uh, planetismals in, in protoplanetary disk. Then to bridge this gap, previous studies have proposed hydrodynamic instabilities that cause dust clumping. And there are actually some instabilities to cause this clumping, but uh, one of the leading mechanism, one promising mechanism is streaming instability. This instability is driven by the interaction between drifting dust and gas through gas drag force. And its spatial scale is much smaller than gas scale height, as we can see from this uh, movie. This movie shows the uh, time evolution of dust density distribution. And Yes, and the previous studies show that the density is, in, is increased by a factor of, for example, a few or 10 or more, depending on the parameters. And one characteristic is, is that this is a purely aerodynamical process, and it doesn't need any attraction force, such as self-gravity, to first concentrate dust grains. And uh, previous studies show that streaming instability can produce massive dust clumps if the uh, dust grains are enriched in the first place. And the, dens the mass density of dust grains exceeds uh, 100 times gas density. And it actually exceeds the brochure density. And it means that the resulting clumps can collapse by self-gravity and planetismals will form from, from the resulting clumps. And here uh, I'm, I'm showing a result of 
streaming instability from uh, Gerbig and Lee 2023, I'm showing this as an example of dust distribution after the storm clumping occurs. And we can see multiple clumps around here, and these are actually gravitationally bound. bound. And so typical size of the resulting planetismals are expected to be uh, on the order of 100 kilometer or uh, much larger. And also the typical size of the asteroids in the solar system is similar. It's about 100 kilometers. So it seems consistent with the uh, asteroid observations and uh, theoretical models. So this may support this scenario. Yes, so the, uh, one of the ad advantageous points is that streaming instability can operate even for small stock number. The left figure shows the condition of planetesimal formation due to streaming instability. The vertical axis is the mid-plane dust to gas ratio, and the horizontal axis is the stock number. This represents the dust sizes. And uh, this, <coughs> this condition is uh, given by Lim et al. 2024, and they show that in this red area, planetesimals will form as a result of streaming instability and its strong clumping. And other previous studies also show that streaming instability can produce massive clumps even for Stokes number of 10 to the minus 3, which is very small compared to the drift limited Stokes number. So uh, it means that it suggests that uh, this instability ha has the, can have a potential to bridge the gap between dust grains at the fermentation barrier to planetesimal sizes. So this is the leading scenario of planetesimal formation. So uh, I have overviewed the current understanding of dust evolution to planetesimals. Then I'm going to talk about one uh, remaining issues that is vital and must be uh, resolved to understand planet formation. So uh, if you have any questions so far, maybe I spoke too fast, but if not, Okay, okay, so uh, yes. Then the thing is, amount of planetesimals coming through this process. The total mass of planetesimals will be scaled with the clumping efficiency. The efficiency depends, actually depends on dust sizes or Stokes number. The left figure shows a probability distribution of uh, dust density in the turbulent state due to streaming instability. This is a cumulative distribution which highlights the volume fluctuation of a dense region. And as we can see from this figure, a larger amount of dust grains is accumulated for larger Stokes number. And actually it's, it's known that the, this efficiency is maximized as the Stokes number between 0.1 and unity. So it's quite large Stokes number. And for smaller Stokes number, the volume fraction of high density region is very small, very small. So it means that only tiny amount of planetesimals will form if Stokes number is small. Then also a uh, recent study have, shown, have pointed out the time scale problem. Uh, the clumping takes longer time for, or, uh, to, to increase the dust density to produce um, massive clumps. And they show that that can be too slow to create massive clumps if the Stokes number of about 0 0.01. So in that case, if, uh, for example, dust grains, dust growth, if the dust growth is limited by fermentation at first, then even streaming instability cannot produce planetesimals from this size. So they, it cannot bridge this gap. So the, then the question is how dust grains can grow beyond the fermentation barrier. To solve this issue, we have been examin examining the potential dust growth during the clumping due to streaming instability. And we are looking at the clumping at moderate level. It's not a uh, storm clumping. We often focus on very dense region, which is clearly relevant to planetesimal formation. But our focus here is this prior stage, this stage which should be prior to the planetesimal formation. 
And according to the previous studies, the velocity dispersion is quite small in the resulting dense region. The velocity dispersion is kind of 0.1% of sound speed. And besides, it's will it will decrease as the plant clumping proceeds. For example, uh, if the local dust density exceeds the 10 or 30, then the velocity dispersion uh, becomes as low as 0.01% of sound speed. And if, if the uh, collision velocity is so low, then dust grains will be free from fermentation. And it may suggest that uh, dust, can, dust grains can grow beyond fermentation barrier as a result of uh, the dust clumping due to streaming instability. And also we have to, uh, I want to note that th there can be a positive feedback process. So uh, it, this means that uh, once streaming instability starts developing, then dust grains becomes larger. So Stokes number increases. Then uh, larger, resulting larger dust grains can, pr can promote clumping because they can, pro they can participate in the uh, uh, development of the SI streaming instability. And as a result, uh, storm clumping is becomes, uh, becomes efficient, more efficient, and planetismals uh, will be accelerated. So uh, in this way, uh, dust, dust coagulation during the clumping will be important in planetismal formation, but it's not well studied yet. So in this work, we try to understand how efficiently, how fast dust grains grow in the turbulent state of, uh, due to streaming instability. So uh, as the first step, we conducted numerical simulations with a fixed dust size, and we measured collision rate in the, uh, turbulent, turbulent, in the turbulence driven by streaming instability. We used Asina with a super particle module, and it, it enables uh, enable us enables us to allow us to track the uh, motion trajectory of each uh, dust grains, each dust particle, super particle. And we measured collision rates first for individual particles and averaged over averaged it over all super particles. Then from next slide, I'm going to focus on the coagulation rate, collision rate averaged over all super particles. And this figure shows the averaged coagulation rate as a function of Stokes number. Again, this Stokes number represents the dust size. And color shows the initial dust to gas ratio. We changed it from 0.3 to 10. And we can see that there is a peak for each line. And this overall tendency is quite clear. As we increase Stokes number from 0.01 to, for example, 0.1, then the clumping efficiency increases. What I mean by clumping efficiency is kind of a density increase from the initial value. So that's why coagulation rate increases like this. And we, if we further increase Stokes number from here to here, then the cross section per unit volume decreases. Then as a result, this uh, coagulation rate decreases like this. So we have a peak like this. And its time scale is quite short. It's about a few to 10 Keplerian orbits. And this is actually shorter than the, than the drift time scale. So this means that uh, even if we consider dust growth during the clumping, the radial motion, the fast radial motion cannot stop the dust growth. So dust grains can safely grow in, in size in the turbulence state due to streaming instability. So uh, as in the previous studies, we also confirmed the, uh, that the velocity dispersion is quite uh, small. This figure shows the velocity dispersion weighted by collision rate. So this represents this uh, this shows the representative uh, collision velocity for each uh, runs. And we find that uh, velocity dispersion increases as Stokes number increases, but its maximum value is quite small. It's about, it's actually about 0.1% uh, of uh, sound speed as shown in the previous studies. And 0.1% of sound speed means that one meter per second 
at the location of the snow line. So it's quite uh, slow, slow velocity. So based on these results, we are expecting that uh, both H2O ice and CO2 ice can grow or beyond the fermentation barrier. And as for rocky dust grains, not dry silicate will be uh, disrupted. It, it's maybe marginal, but a dry silicate can grow. So uh, the chemical state of the surface of the silicate will be critical. So we have to take it into account in future work. But this is the kind of uh, implication to the rocky planetismal formation. So anyway, we have shown that coagulation during the cramping at the moderate, le moderate level has the potential to bridge the gap like this. So in our scenario, larger dust grains can be produced by the coagulation aided by streaming instability. So they, uh, de they helped collision velocity to decrease below the critical velocity and also the clamping enhances the collision rate because the density is locally increased. And we also examined how this type of coagulation changed the view of uh, planetismal formation and especially how it will change the condition of planetismal formation. So uh, here is what, uh, what we are envisioning and this middle panel uh, focuses on the dust layer in a gas disk like this. And let's consider a situation where the very initial dust growth is limited by uh, some fermentation and dust grains have a fermentation limited Stokes number and they are distributed in the vertical dimension like this. And streaming instability can be operational in, uh, in sub-layer where dust density is relatively high. So we call them uh, we call its region SI active zone. In this region, the collision velocity becomes lower as the clamping proceeds. And it produces larger dust grains and Stokes number increases. Then as a result, planetesimals will form once the Stokes number becomes high enough, high enough. And we have to note that uh, resulting larger dust grains can settle towards the midplane and this increases the mid-plane dust to gas ratio. And it, this is another key factor to promote planetismal formation. And so uh, considering this kind of evolution, we examine if the SI active zone can exist for a uh, given disk parameter, and we derive a new condition for planetismal formation. So uh, this figure shows uh, a condition we derived. The vertical axis is the mid-plane dust to gas ratio, and the horizontal axis is the Stokes number before the onset of streaming instability. So it's kind of a dust size in the SI dead zone. And the previous studies show that the parenthesismal formation can happen in only in this region, but we show that coagulation, that coagulation during the clamping can, it enables the parenthesismal formation even in this parameter space. So uh, the condition for planetismals will be uh, appreciably relaxed. For example, uh, especially for stocks, small stocks number. And so for example, dust to critical dust to gas ratio for stocks number of 0 0.01 is reduced by a factor of 10. So uh, as this figure shows, planetismal formation more, planetismals will form more efficiently is thanks to the coagulation beyond the fermentation barrier. And lastly, I briefly mention an implication to disk observations. We find that coagulation timescale is quite short, quite short. It, we estimated it, roughly estimated it, and we find that, for example, the evolution timescale from Stokes number 0 0.01 to 0.3 is less than 100 Kepler m orbits. It means that 0.1 million year at 100 AU but uh, on the other hand, the, the uh, previous observation have found million, million year old disks. It's more, it's kind of frequent. So it means that uh, those observed disks should be in this region. So for example, especially uh, one million year old protoplanetary disk having millimeter sized dust grains should be in this white region. For example, if, if the dust grains or these disks 
in this red region, the dust grains are quickly converted to uh, planetismals, so we cannot observe them. So that's why uh, this is the region we can observe the disk. And this gives the relation between the observed dust surface density and dust, dust scale height. And dust scale height can be estimated from observations in some cases, but it's not always the case. So uh, if we can somehow, somehow estimate uh, dust to gas surface density ratio from the observation, it can give the lower limit of dust scale height. And we can use it to infer the uh, lower limit of the strength of turbulence. And, you, and we can use it, also use it to infer the driving, driving source of uh, turbulence. But uh, this is quite very, uh, very naive statement. So uh, we will address this topic more to connect observations and uh, the dust growth uh, model. So uh, this is the summary of my talk and I'm glad to take questions. So thank you very much. Average coagulation. Sorry. So you mean lower dust to gas ratio? Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, uh, streaming sensitivity is very weak, so we may not expect the enhanced coagulation. Uh, sure, uh, good question. Uh, that can be, that cannot be necessarily the instabilities. For example, around the snow line, dust grains are piled up j just outside of the snow line. Uh, dust grains are known to pile up, to, known to be piled up, and it increases the total metallicity. So in that case, we may expect a relatively high dust to gas ratio. And also, uh, the, the very initial dust growth allows dust grains to settle towards the midplane. And it can increase the dust to gas ratio slightly. So it will also help. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, that's also a good question. Uh, we didn't include other sources of gas turbulence, and our expectation is, is that dust grains are shielded from the external turbulence if the dust density, local dust density exceeds, uh, local dust to gas ratio exceeds unity because dust grains are massive in that region compared to the gas. So gas cannot perturb the dust grains. But, but that's Mike's uh, expectation, naive expectation, so we should explore more. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, um, so this, this simulation, are, are they local simulations or in the global system? Uh, it's, it's local, local. Yeah, yeah so the, the question I'm asking is that um, uh, because you represent the dust grain size with the Stokes number, but actually in this with radio drift, the Stokes, well, the local Stokes number is also a function of the surface density and the temperature. So actually the Stokes number increases even slowly than the grain size. Mm. So if you, if you take this into account, does your results still stay valid? Uh, I think it's okay. For example, uh, <coughs> let's see, for example, I said that the dust growth stops at some barrier. Right? And this barrier, or the dust size, is determined by Stokes number. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, depending on gas density for the fixed stocks number, the dust size will change. But uh, you are thinking that fixed dust size, right? I mean, locally, if you increase the dust size, then stocks number grows linearly with the mm. size. But if you take into account the radio drift, then the stocks number actually grows slowly than the mm. size. Uh, yes, for that question, I would say that the drift time scale is really uh, longer than the coagulation time scale. Okay. So, um, mm, it What's roughly the difference, the ratio difference the time scale? Uh, okay, let me show you. It's uh, a few orders of magnitude. Like, mm -hmm. it's very small. Uh, sorry, I don't have figure, but uh, yes, it's very small. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Method, okay. Yes, yes. Gas is kind of a grid code, but uh, for particle, we use particle solver to represent. Yes, so we use super particles to represent dust fluid. Uh, gas is evolving. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, and gas motion is induced by dust motion. That's the streaming instability. So, uh, yeah, I, I actually showed only dust evolution movies. So, but uh, gas is also evolving in our simulation. Yes, and it's the uh, aerodynamical drug force. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, since you, uh, you performed the simulations with one dust size, we know from previous papers that if you introduce a size distribution, it has a tremendous effect on the SI, right? So, what do you estimate uh, if you would really take into account the size distribution that you get from your? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there is a study on multi-species streaming instability, and they said that if the initial dust to gas ratio is larger than unity, then the, we can expect streaming instability, e even in the presence of size distribution. And they also show that there is a size uh, segregation of dust grains, and larger dust grains uh, move preferentially move to the high dense region, uh, high density region. So, it, we can use this uh, estimated coagulation rate. Qu qualitatively, will it will change, but uh, yeah, we can expect the same effect, same effects, even in the uh, presence of dust size distribution. Thank you very much.